The uh, public television family is pleased to welcome Beth Cern, TV personality, author, animal activist, and um, she also happens to know a guy named Howard Stern. Um, we'll talk about that later. Um, your love of animals, your caring for animals comes from? My family. I think it's in my blood. I, my family's firstborn was a collie mix named Susie Dog, and we always treated our pets as members of our family. So Susie Dog wasn't a dog, she was the firstborn of my parents. Yeah, this, this book, Yoda Gets a Buddy. A buddy. It's right. number two. It's the sequel of right, last check it year's out. Got this. Yoda. This you guys story. have a, a still story. Sorry for interrupting, Beth. OK, and the other one is uh, Yoda, the story of a cat and his kittens. Tie the two together. Yeah, well, um, New York Times bestseller, by the way. Very oh, pleased. Look at you plugging away. And you know, I'm only <laughs> saying that because 100%, 100% of my author's proceeds go to North Shore Animal League America, the world's largest no-kill rescue organization. Um, so a lot of people bought the book, and a lot of money went. A lot of money went to saving more animals. Um, yeah, my husband and I have been fostering adult cats and kittens, and a, a, we actually fostered a dog a year ago as well. And it's such an important part of our lives. We nurture and foster and um, find amazing homes for these animals that come through our house. Mm -hmm. In addition to our six resident cats that we, just that we saw have. Yoda. I think we saw a picture of you and Howard and Yoda right oh, there. Oh yeah, my! So good. I'm sorry. Yeah. So. Um, so through our fostering, we like to foster a special needs or an adult cat all, at all times. And there was one little guy who came in. I actually saw him at North Shore Animal League. He was miserable. By the way, you keep talking about North Shore Animal League. Tell yeah. everyone where that is. North Shore Animal League America. Our headquarters are located in Port Washington, Long Island. It's 45 minutes away from New York City. And um, we, we facilitate over 20,000 adoptions a year. Incredible, 20, right? 20,000. We have partner shelters all over the United States. We take our mobile units and we go to overcrowded municipal shelters, take animals out of there who are endangered of being euthanized. We bring them back to our headquarters. So we facilitate and, yeah, responsible, responsible for 20,000 adoptions a year. And Beth, you, you, you keep using the term fostering. So I, I, can yeah. you explain what that means? Fostering is taking an animal out of a caged situation in a shelter or an animal that's not ready yet to be put on the floor for adoption. A lot of times, little tiny kittens that still need to be bottle fed or nurtured until they are at the right weight to be spayed and neutered, which North Shore Animal League America takes care of all the animals before they're adopted, we spay and neuter. I don't personally do it, but North Shore Animal League does. So they're animals with special needs who need to be nurtured, who need to get better before they are ready for adoption. Mm. So a lot of times though, there are animals sitting in cages at shelters that are depressed or sickly and they need some loving before they're ready for their forever homes. Mm. So in that case, my husband and I take a lot of, most of the, lately it's been kittens, but an adult animal that is in need of nurturing. And Yoda was a Persian cat who was completely emaciated, dropped off by his former owner, um, just dumped at Animal League, and he was so pathetic and sickly. And I, he was sitting in the back of his cage at North Shore, and I pointed at him, and I said, you're going to come home with us, and we're going to make you a rock star because of my <laughs> husband being on the radio. He talks about our fosters and makes them rock stars, and that's when the applications come pouring in. So I brought home this cat, and my husband names every animal that comes through our door. And he- Howard names them? Everyone. And we fostered 160, over 160 animals over the last couple of years. And Howard has named- Every, all 160, no everyone. Would so he saw this pathetic guy come in, he named him Yoda. He looked like <laughs> Yoda. And I took him to the vet, and the vet told me that he had three to six months to live. He was in heart failure. So that was the day that my husband and I decided to stop fostering him and um, adopt him officially so he could live out his last breath in our home. Well, it was the beginning of kitten season, and I had my first litter of kittens that I saved from being euthanized at a local municipal shelter, brought the kittens home. Yoda walked down the hallway, and I opened the foster room, and a miracle happened. Yoda walked into the room, started nurturing the kittens, grooming them, making f sure they ate all their meals, slept with literally one eye open. Um, kittens would escape the foster room. He would go on his hind legs, Steve, and corral them back in. It was remarkable. And over the course of the few months that I was fostering kittens, I took Yoda back to the vet, and the vet said that his heart was getting stronger. And here we are, a year and a half later, Yoda's still with us. He's off of all of his heart meds. Fine. 
I truly believe that love and purpose healed his heart. And that was a message that I wanted to share to children. And that's why the that's book. That's Yoda 1. That's wonderful. The first book. And then la this past kitten season, I literally sit in the foster room and observe. And miracles are happening in there. And they're precious moments that I want to share mm. to kids. And that was, that was the inspiration for Yoda Gets a Buddy. And, and by the way, just to remind everyone, all the proceeds, again, go to the North Shore Animal, Animal League. League America, 100%. Yeah. And, and there, in this instance, a blind kitten came in. We had to have both of his eyes removed. And Yoda and Buddy became partners in the foster room and started caring for all the kittens. And it's a very, very sweet, sweet story. True. It's all true. It's powerful stuff. But again, growing up the way you did, how you did, Animals became a big part of your life. Yeah, I don't have children. My husband and I, I'm 43 years old. Right. I don't have children. My animals are my children. And um, through this fostering, I, I'm so fulfilled in my life. It's my purpose. But Howard in this, yes. have you pulled him into it? Or mm. has he said, because I, again, I'm a fan for a long time, yeah. listened for a long time. My wife and I have always listened to him. I don't know if I sense that he was an animal lover before. He was, he was. A closeted animal lover? No, um, he always, uh, growing up he didn't have animals, but with his children they always had a dog and a okay. cat, and yeah, he was a big animal lover. Had he known when he met me that 170 <laughs> animals, including our, were gonna come through our home? Um, probably not, but he is my biggest cheerleader. He does, he's my partner in this. He helps me socialize the kittens. He's all in. He cleans litter boxes with me. He does not. Yes, he does. He is, I, I get very emotional because even now we are foster free. I, we had a crate, we're going away this weekend and I don't have a foster at home and it feels really strange for me. And even Howard said, he goes, just go get one now. We'll just, just get one now and we'll figure out what we'll do when we go away. He does not like to have a house without fosters either. It's really, but, but he's amazing. He, hasn't he also, Beth, called your home Catnado? Has he? <laughs> yeah, did there are producers? You cannot give me bad information. But he, but he, if he said that, it was probably in the most loving way. Oh, not in a negative way. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. There are um, cats everywhere, but our house is so clean, and um, yeah, we love it. Yeah, by the way, we're showing some shots of the North Shore Animal League as we talk about a little bit more. Yeah. Talk specifically a little bit about some of the services that they provide as we show some shots. Oh, well, we have, oh, we have hundreds of, we, we literally just got back from a puppy mill rescue in Virginia. I think 400 puppies and dogs that were in a horrific puppy mill environment were rescued by us, brought to our facility. They're getting cleaned up. They're going to get spayed and neutered up for adoption very soon. Um, they're, everything about what they do and their mission is all about mm. saving lives. And I love spending time there. I love working for them. It's the most precious thing seeing an animal come from there and end up being adopted into the most loving home. Do you know the website? Uh, www.animalleague.org. Good stuff. And the time we have left, a couple questions, big picture questions. Um, when you, you were talking before we got on the air that you met Howard when? We met Howard, I, we. I met Howard, we? <laughs> I met Howard 15 years ago, 16 years ago right. at a restaurant, the Mercer Kitchen downtown here in Manhattan. And we have not been apart since the night we met. How did it change your life? Look at my life. I was a working model in New York City, making ends meet, traveling to Europe back and forth on photo shoots. Now I don't have to do that. I can literally spend my days living out my passion because I have the lifestyle that I live with a supportive husband who, who encourages and supports what I do. It brings me to tears. And for folks who see Howard a certain way or, or don't really understand that side of him. Don't you think that America's Got Talent changed that, though, for him? Oh, in so many ways. Right? In so many ways. And by the way, I wasn't even going in a bad direction. Yeah. I'm just saying Yeah, who, no, who I just feel like people him. have an idea of who he is, but I feel over the course of the last four years, being on primetime network TV, people it, have starting to understand. His, my view of this, and in, in, in public television, we, our job as hosts is not to share our point of view, but I'll just yeah. say his brand is much broader than ever before, right. and his audience is broader than ever before, in part because of what you're just describing. But for you, this is what I'm also curious about, for you, when you are out and when you are with him, what is that like for you? Um, it was the hard. public part. It was hard when we first met, and I was getting a lot of offers to be on covers of magazines to a model that's a dream. 
but to be on the cover of a magazine because you're associated with someone, that's hard to wrap your head around. But you don't know that that was the reason why. Oh, it definitely was. It was, I remember the, the first cover I was offered from FHM Magazine wanted Howard Stern's girlfriend on the cover. And I shied away from that for, I think it was almost a year. And then it got to the point where I knew that Howard was gonna be my future. Let me embrace all of that, all of those things. And while I was doing that, I started my animal rescue and all of that, being in the newspaper, being sure. in magazines has only helped my mission to save animals. And, and as a TV personality, because I said Stephen Schripper was here just yeah. a few months ago and did a great interview and talked about work that you've done with him on yeah. the air. You've hosted a bunch of television. I am actually hosting Hallmark Channel's Kitten Bowl for the third year in a row on Super Bowl Sunday. What's it called? The Hallmark Channel's third annual Kitten Bowl. We just taped that last week. And all 100 kittens that were used in the taping have since been adopted. And we hold adoption parties for all over the United States with all of our partner shelters. Hopes that we get hundreds more adopted. Yeah, February. Do you love being out there as a public person doing what you're doing? By itself or because you're able to do other things as it relates to helping animals? It all has to do with animals. All of the outside stuff, if it can get one more, if I can get one more person or one more animal's lives saved, one more person involved, then it makes it all worthwhile. I'm really, sh I'm kind of shy with all that stuff. Are you really? Yeah, but Howard and I together, we're a team, and I, in, in the respect of me finding and helping more animals, bring it on. Let's do it's, it. It's interesting. When you are talking, we've got, got a few seconds left. When you are talking about animals, you just totally light up. Yeah, I love their, it's my passion in life. Howard and animals. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your message to folks out there, is, I've never called myself an animal person, yeah. you know, but our kids are like, Dad, you got to do this. You got to yeah. get a dog, you know. Adopt, or, my message is go to your local shelter first. When you go to a local shelter and you adopt, you're not only saving the life of the animal that you're adopting, you're opening up space for another animal to be saved. So my message is, if you're thinking about adding a furry friend to your family, a new family member, please go to your local shelter. Beth, you are a great advocate. You're helping so many animals, particularly those in need. Do you mind if I plug again? Please. Yoda Gets a Buddy by Beth Stern, New York Times best-selling author, which is the sequel to Yoda, the story of a cat and his kittens. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much, Steve. That Thanks was wonderful. for having me. That was great. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>